This is Magnetic Dreams Animation Studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're here to see how a Marvel Knights animation is created from the original comic book art and story. The first task is separating the panels into the layers that are required to animate them. The panels are separated from digital scans, with each panel given a unique number. Each panel has the characters separated into their own layer. The background and overlapping elements are then painted in. The panels are then brought in and edited with the voiceovers to tell the story. This animatic is the first form of animated storytelling. The comic medium ceases to exist as the passage of time leaves the reader's control and is determined by the directors. This is a quick way to determine which panels will be used, how the camera is going to move and cut between the shots, what the mood and approach will be for each shot, and where additional work is going to be performed in terms of 3D animation of character, special effects, and simulations. Once an animatic is created, the staff meets to review it, and the directors communicate their vision in completing the episode. Difficult sequences are then discussed and tasks are assigned so that everyone knows what needs to be done. Now that the shots are established, the panels are brought back into Photoshop. Since the camera angles and distances are now defined, the artists know where the backgrounds need to be extended. In the original comic art, the panels can be of various sizes, but for video, these panels have to be extended to fit a 16x9 HD frame. Characters and other elements are also extended, carefully using parts of the original art where possible to maintain the look of the original comic. Character animation falls into two broad categories, 2D and 3D. The 2D character animation is created using the original art by cutting it into numerous layers, painting in the missing parts, and then moving, rotating, and warping the layers to get motion. Yet behold what I have achieved. Be thus inspired to dream of what you with your spirit might one day... When there is motion needed to tell the story that cannot be created from the original art, 3D animation is utilized. The character is sculpted in the computer, and then pieces of the original art are applied to the sculpture so that it looks as much as possible like the art in the comic. Once modeled, the characters are rigged with a skeletal structure that allows the animators to make them move realistically. Animators bring in the original comic art and backgrounds to pose and move the characters, while maintaining as much of the framing and poses from the original comic as possible. For many shots, actors are brought in to portray the moves as a reference for the animators. This is an effective way for the directors to communicate the performance they want in the shot and helps add subtle nuances that bring the shot to life. Once a shot is animated, the effects artists can begin their work. In Thor and Loki, Blood Brothers, most of the characters are wearing flowing cloth that has to be simulated on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. The cloth simulation engine has parameters such as gravity, elasticity, and stiffness that have to be set to get a realistic effect. The more complex the movement of the character, the more the settings have to be tweaked to get just the right end results. The cloth simulation also takes wind into effect. Why have a superhero with a cape if there isn't going to be wind? Other simulated effects are determined on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. For example, the dungeons of Asgard are filled with smoky torches and blowing dust. Characters can appear in billowing smoke, and magic spells sparkle to life. I bid you welcome, Hela. You are wise to show me courtesy, Loki Laufason. We may be monarchs both, but with a touch of my hand I can yet render you my subject. May I offer you some refreshment? I neither eat nor drink, Lord of Asgard. Finally, the 3D scenes are lit and rendered. The lighting from the comic panels is studied and carefully duplicated so that the characters integrate back into the original art. Each scene is rendered in numerous passes so that there is more control when they are assembled into the final scene. Magnetic Dreams utilizes a technique called projection mapping to create lip syncs for the characters. 
The original art from the comic is lined up and projected onto a 3D model of the character's face. The 3D model can then be animated to provide the lip sync and other facial movements. What do you speak? You have ever vowed Thor's destruction, Loki? Were those oaths mere wind? The result of unguarded anger, later regretted. The compositing phase is where all the elements come together to make up the final images. Building upon the animatic, the elements from each department are imported, lined up, and color corrected. Atmospheric elements such as rays of sunlight, rain, smoke, and dust are added to bring new life to the shots. In a comic, the artist will often reveal the setting or location of a scene in a single panel and then not redraw it in subsequent panels, focusing the attention on the action or drama of the characters. In animated form, suddenly cutting to solid color backgrounds can be distracting. One of the compositor's jobs is to make sure that the backgrounds are consistent and appealing throughout, utilizing pieces of art from the comic to build new backgrounds and environments. The final step in compositing is to color correct all the elements so they work together to create a consistent mood that fits the emotional content of the scene. All the shots are rendered out individually and brought together in a final edit. Here, everything is reviewed for quality and consistency, and subtle timing tweaks are made to ensure the story flows smoothly and naturally. The end result is a hybrid animation utilizing very detailed comic art to create a final piece that looks very different from more standard animations and brings the story to life right off the comic page. To be fated, to lose, to know destiny itself, the architect of my torment. Can it be true? Is to be Loki to be without hope? And if so, to whom can a god appeal for mercy?